do you think you're succeeding where others have have failed or you know haven't haven't even get, got any runs on the board? Well, I, I've said a couple of times that I do not regard our current state as a finish line. This is the starting line. And I will also say that we're certainly not the only people thinking of this. You asked about the future of transport. Well, that's multifaceted. Ground transport, long haul air travel, uh, short haul uh, personal aircraft uh, that could be, uh, uh, that will be flown autonomously in, in, in taxi-like services. Uh, that's our focus right now. Um, again, uh, what everything I, we've shown you is real and uh, we're happy about that. It's been a long time coming. I mean, I work with a team of very patient and hugely talented engineers. I, look, I genuinely look up to them. They're fun to be with, but their patience and their tenacity has amazed me. I've been with the company three years, and I have the privilege of uh, bringing this to the world and, 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 and putting it in commercial operation. So uh, we have a lot of work left to do, but I do believe that we're on a good path. What would you say are the keys to your your playbook in terms of uh, developing this technology and developing something that will be relevant commercially? Patience, brains, tenacity, sense of humor doesn't hurt, and a visionary and a generous supporter. So who are the people that you've drawn on? Where, where have they come from? Because you're, you're dealing with some reasonably large challenges here and you need people with some pretty deep expertise. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a hybrid. It's a, a group of people who've worked on avionics, who've worked on composites, who've worked on flight controls, who've worked on uh, automobile manufacturing, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, battery technology in both ground vehicles and air vehicles. It's really a marvelous a potpourri of, 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 of really, really smart, fun, humble, and uh, very, very nice people, I might say. And, and tell us about uh, your operations here in, in New Zealand and why New Zealand is an attractive place for you to operate. We're operating right now under experimental certificates in both the United States and New Zealand. We are engaged very intensively with the civil aviation authorities to bring this to market in a commercial sense. New Zealand is, uh, has tremendous integrity and bench strength and capacity to certify aircraft. There's literally only a handful of countries in the entire world that have done this. Maybe it's because one of the first flyers in the world, Richard Pierce, uh, flew here. That might have something to do with it. But the point is that they have, uh, in New Zealand, they have decades and decades of experience with highly trained professionals. And they want to, New Zealand wants to embrace the future as much as we do. So uh, uh, it's a fun place to be. It's a beautiful place to hang out and uh, a very, very exciting place to do a public-private partnership that we feel is exemplary. I, I heard, um one of your previous talks and it was to do with uh, launching Virgin America and certainly it does seem in some parts of the world things can take a very long time with with various processes. Are you finding that New Zealand is, is a place where there aren't too many um, unfair roadblocks being put in your way? None that we've seen uh, and you know we've been talking here a long time and as I said the handshake started in October of, 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 of 2016 uh, we're not looking for shortcuts, and New Zealand isn't a shortcut place. But New Zealand is a place that will work hard and secure the resources to, to, to build a better future. So it's not an easy job, uh, but with enough hard work and enough resources on both sides of the table, it ought to go pretty well. Now, just looking, uh, looking forward, the technology you're developing, it uh, seems to make sense that that could scale in, in some way. Is that on your radar at all for you know, larger size uh, vehicles than, than Cora? Oh, I wouldn't rule that out. I'll be very candid that we're not thinking about that right now. Uh, if we can make uh, a very reliable, dependable, affordable two-seater that will take people starting at 50 miles, maybe getting up to 100 as batteries improve over time, that'll take some time. Honestly, 
There's so many use cases in the world, we think that this plane could be effectively deployed in the thousands. Now, of course, as technology gets better, as components get lighter, as materials become more innovative, um, and batteries get stronger, sure, at some point there'll be three, five, ten seaters, uh, but that's not on our radar right now. And if we were to say, you know, look, ten years out, we're here in in Auckland right now. Um, now it might not be Auckland in terms of the, the locations that you you choose, but um, a city like Auckland, how can you, how would you imagine um, that what we might be using Cora and how that might integrate with other uh, transport systems? Well, taking Auckland as an example, and we very much dream of uh, being in Auckland uh, when we've earned our way to it. Uh, one logical place to start would be multiple uh, services, maybe every even five or ten minutes, over heavily traveled commuter routes where there's a lot of congestion and a lot of misery with people losing time and, 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 and not working and not being with their families and not doing the things that they enjoy the most. So a logical place would be to have vertiports with hopefully up to dozens of aircraft um, that take off on prescribed routes, A to B. Uh, in the very long run, then the planes should be able to function uh, safely and reliably in an environment where they can go um, anywhere, in any direction. That's a good ways off. And that's going to take a, a lot of work uh, uh, with air traffic management, but we're already in deep dialogue with the entities responsible for that in New Zealand as well. To wrap up, what does the rest of your sort of roadmap look like at high level? I know you can't put dates on, on things until you actually get there. Uh, safety obviously is, is paramount to that, but what do those stages look like between now and when I'll be able to uh, uh, you know, jump in Cora instead of uh, navigating the traffic home after work? Well, um, to begin with, We've come very, very far. The product you're seeing today, uh, designed by my highly capable colleagues um, and, and tested and engineered and, and, and iterated and reiterated again and again and again over eight long years, again, we're, that has brought us to the starting line, not the finish line. So to be very explicit, we are going to continue to improve. We're going to make better materials. We're going to make more reliable avionics. We're going to make more intuitive software. Uh, we're going to improve the batteries that have already been improved by uh, a significant percentage every year for the last eight years. We will make uh, many more aircraft than we have before. Uh, we will produce, produce new versions uh, two, three, four in the next two years that will get us to um, the, the, the next starting line from this starting line to the next one, which is a certified a licensed aircraft licensed to carry human beings. I can't give you a date, and I think it would be foolhardy to try to do so. But that's the roadmap, and one thing I would add is learning to manufacture at scale. So the more we make, the better uses, and the more affordable it will be. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time, Fred. It's my pleasure.